Prophet says abide by her will not enter paradise Prophet says abide by her will not enter paradise Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin amma ba'd fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim والصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel Sheikh Mujaddiddin Firuz Abadi alayhi rahmatullahi al-hadi has stated that when you sit in a gathering recite Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa sallallahu ala Muhammad Allah Azza wa Jal will appoint an angel that will protect you from backbiting. And when you rise from that majlis, that mafil, that gathering, at that time also recite Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad. Allah Azza wa Jal will order that angel to keep others from backbiting against you. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al Habib. Sallallahu Taala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, in the previous episodes we were discussing this grave sin of backbiting. When we meet another Muslim, we greet them with salam. And in the books of Hadith, it is narrated that the rationale being that one should have the intention that the Muslim I am giving salam to, his Dignity and respect, amongst other things, is within my protection. And our pious predecessors, they instilled a madani thought process that we should be the protectors of the honor, the dignity and respect of our brothers and sisters. One Muslim should be the guardian of the honor, respect and dignity of another Muslim. We should stand up for the rights of others. We should be the ones who are there to fight their corner. When it's a Muslim brother being backbitten or slandered, we were the ones who were to stop that. Yet sadly, in these trying times, things have almost turned on the head. Today, the very people that were indoctrinated with this concept of stopping this disease of backbiting, unfortunately, have fallen into the trap. And today, Muslims spend their time gossiping Tale telling, backbiting, and even seeking opportunities to humiliate other Muslims. So the guardian of respect, the Muslim, through what he did learn through the teachings of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who was an embodiment of brotherhood and who was to protect the respect and dignity and honor of his fellow brothers has now turned to the one who is looking for opportunities to humiliate his brother, his teacher, his sister, even his mother and father. Nobody is safe from him. And what an awful state of being we are in. What creatures we've become that nobody is safe from us. We have no care for other people's feelings. My feelings matter. What I perceive to be bad matters. If somebody even points a finger at me, how dare they? That is disrespect. And yet I have a license to go about hurting others' feelings without any justification. It's time to think. It is stated on page 19 of the booklet, Zulm Kanjam, 
published by Maktab al Madina, that the matters of rights of the people are very serious. And you're going to be held accountable for them. Hurting other people's feelings isn't something minor. And yet today, not a care comes past us. If, if a glass falls on the floor and breaks, we become upset. But we break others' hearts with impunity without even thinking about it. We make other people around us sad without even thinking about it. And they are such daring times, my dear Islamic brothers, that we don't care. And those who set out to be the flag bearers of Islam, to change the world, to change this rotten society that we're in, to change the ways of the people, to make them better people, have now fallen into the trap of backbiting and are now the cause of a lot of fighting and a lot of troubles and torments. And even the learned scholars are not free from this. In the great book written by Amir al-Sunan Damul Barakatul Aliyah, Ghibat Kitabakari and Backbiting, he writes that today, so-called religious scholars or the noble and the learned who should be caring more about other people's feelings, even they have fallen into this satanic trap and they remain oblivious to the feelings of others. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, Islam was beautiful. Islam taught us to appreciate others. It taught us that their feelings mattered. It taught us that their, their dignity, their pride, their self-respect, their honor was very, very important to them. So don't hurt that. Let me give you an example. When you saw a Muslim walking down the street in wet weather, rainy weather, we may have all experienced this, and he falls or you fall, what's the first thing you do or he does? You're not bothered about whether you're hurt or not. The person stands up and looks around whether anybody's seen me. Because he's worried about his dignity, his honor, his respect. This is why Islam was there to protect that by prohibiting this very, very grave sin of backbiting. Because it was recognized that this could cause irreversible damage. Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Rahman cited the Hadith of Mubarakah from Tabrani Sharif on page 342 of Fatawa Rizviya Sharif, volume 2 where the, the best and most dignified of the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, Haqqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cautioned, whoever, without a cause that is permissible under Islamic law, harms a Muslim, he has harmed me, and the one who harms me, harmed Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Akbar. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, let's listen to that hadith of Mubarakah again. Whoever harms a Muslim has harmed me. And whoever harms me has harmed Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the ayat of the Quran, Surah Ahzab, part 22, verse 57. It is said, indeed those who trouble Allah and his noble prophet Upon them is the curse in the world and in the hereafter. And Allah has kept prepared a disgraceful punishment for them. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni channel, this self-respect that people had, this dignity that people had, was so precious in the court of Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the best of creation, the most dignified, the highest respected, creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, the best creation of Allah Azza wa Jal is saying that whoever harms a Muslim has harmed me. And whoever has harmed me has harmed Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Quran is saying this is wrong because the sanctity of the respect of a Muslim was very high. Indeed, the seal of prophethood, 
the merciful Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed the Kaaba, this amazing Kaaba built by Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, the direction we pray in, look at the respect that we give it, look at the honor and dignity of the Kaaba. We won't even turn our back towards it. We won't point our feet towards it. Looking at it gains you reward. A stature of amazing blessings. The Holy Kaaba. Our lives evolve around it. We walk around it in worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And yet, Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam addresses the Kaaba and says that a moment's sanctity is greater than yours. So the respect, honor, and dignity of a Muslim brother is greater than the Kaaba. And yet we, by backbiting him, try to disrespect and dishonor him. And it is worse than disrespecting the Kaaba. Allahu Akbar. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, in another blessed hadith of Barakah, Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, and this is a hadith of Mubarakah which we need to learn and we need to write on our hearts and we need to remember for the rest of our lives. A moment is he from whose hands and tongue other Muslims are safe. Let me read that again. A moment is he from whose hands and tongue other Muslims are safe. Ask yourself. Are other Muslims safe from my tongue? Or are they scared? Are they scared as to what I'm going to say next? How I'm going to disrespect them? How I'm going to belittle them? How I might be mimicking them? How I might be saying the wrong thing about them? How I'm going to behave when they're not here? If they are worried about this, then I'm, am I really respecting them more than I respect the Kaaba? Am I taking their honor and dignity as the Quran and the Hadith of Mubarakah tells me to? Am I following the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Or am I following in the steps of the Shaitan and the path of the Shaitan? Because this is a very, very important question. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, Today is the time to ask ourselves, am I an ideal Muslim? Because you tell me, the one who swears at other Muslims, is he an ideal Muslim? The one whose tongue utters backbiting against another Muslim, is he an ideal Muslim? The one who can't miss an opportunity to come up with bad remarks about others, is he a good Muslim? The one who looks for every opportunity to reveal others' faults. Is he a good Muslim? The one who can't miss an opportunity to make people laugh at the expense of others. Is he a good Muslim? The one who goes around labeling people as being stupid, inferior to himself, and revealing their faults, harming anybody he can see in his path. Is he a good Muslim? The one who wanders about and wherever he goes, all he does is hurts people's feelings. Is he a good Muslim? The one who turns to violence, the one who criticizes for the sake of criticizing, is he a good Muslim? My dear Islamic brothers, the one who abuses others, whether with his tongue, his hands, his eyes, his actions, is he a good Muslim? Is he a Muslim? that Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be pleased with? No. He isn't a good Muslim and he isn't an ideal Muslim. His faith is weak. His belief in Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah is weak. His belief in the torment of the grave is weak. His belief in the day of judgment is weak. And that is why the shaitan has overpowered him. The shaitan has dragged him onto the path of destruction. And the shaitan calls him and he responds. 
And the shaitan says, belittle so-and-so, and he does it. The shaitan says, disrespect so-and-so, and he does it. And the shaitan says, backbite so-and-so, and he does it. May Allah Azawajal grant us refuge from the whispers and the planning and the traps of the shaitan. On the other hand, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, you have that Muslim who harbors true faith in his heart. He loves the teachings of Islam. His tongue doesn't hurt anybody. His actions don't hurt anybody. He tries to help others. He looks at his own faults and prays in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ki ya Allah, hide his faults and hide mine as well. When he is faced with a situation where he becomes angry, he becomes patient and does not backbite others. When he has the opportunity to violate the rights of others and disrespect them for the sake of Allah and his Habib, he shies away from this. And for the sake of Allah and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he is patient and enduring and forbearing. And he does not let the whispers of the shaitan take over him. And he does not give away his hard-earned deeds simply to satisfy the desires of his nafs by talking about and disrespecting others. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, it is that type of Muslim that we want to be. We want to be the Muslim in whose hands and from whose tongue others are safe. We want to be the Muslim who does not harm anybody with this tongue. We want to be the Muslim that acts in accordance with the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to be the Muslim who brings people together, whose household is at peace. Why? Because he does not commit ghibat. He does not backbite. And he teaches others not to backbite. We want to be the type of Muslim who makes sure that in his household, nobody backbites. And if anybody goes down this slippery slope, he stops them straight away. If he realizes that somebody's going to be backbiting about somebody else, he says, no, let's talk about something else. You remember the, 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 the beautiful narration from a Rukn Shura that when somebody was about to backbite, they interrupted him and said, Chodo Madine ki baat karo. Subhanallah. Let me tell you, backbiting, you cannot even backbite against children. Some people think children and politicians are allowed. No, they're not. No, Islam does not allow this. And it is written in the books that it is haram. Sheikh Sayyidina Ibn Abidin Shami Rahmatullah cites that the sayings of Imam Ibn Hajr Rahmatullah that it is haram to backbite against a minor and an insane person just as it is haram to backbite against an adult. Allahu Akbar. And today, what do we do at home? Children, we think they don't, this doesn't apply to them. And we declare the faults of children in front of others. And when children at home backbite, when children at home come back and express something that they've seen or learnt, what we should be doing is we should be stopping and saying, Beta, no, that's not right. You are talking about somebody behind their back and you are highlighting faults or things that have gone wrong. That is wrong. Islam does not allow this. No, unfortunately, what we do is we encourage it. What happened? Tell me. Tell me everything. What did she say? What did he say? And what are we doing? We are creating a toxic atmosphere in our house. Why? Because our children are being brought up, being encouraged to backbite. They are encouraged to regurgitate. And sometimes we sit around laughing when children mimic other people. Oji Bullangratha, he was, he was not walking properly. He had one leg, so the child's limping. The entire family's laughing. In actual fact, what was the child doing? He was learning in the early stages of doing ghibat of other people. And what were we doing? We were laughing. And his brain or her brain was taking on board. Whatever I'm doing must be good. 
Because my mum, dad, my uncles and aunties, they're all sat there, and they're all having a good laugh. So I must be doing right. So when I'm saying bad things about other people, that must be a good thing. When I'm saying awful things and disrespecting somebody who's not here, they seem to think it's good, so it must be good. And then when that child grows up, backbiting becomes an intrinsic part of their character. Why? Because over the ages, they have seen us do it in our homes, and we have encouraged it in our children. And suddenly, when our house gets torn apart, because our siblings, brothers and sisters are backbiting, or our children are backbiting and fighting and there's infighting and then we sit there with our head in our hands thinking, why is all this going on? Why is he fighting with him and she's fighting with her? And why is no uncle happy and we're not going to his house because he said this and he said this and why is all this happening? And if you trace it back, my dear Islamic brothers and sisters, you will realize that the root cause of this was backbiting. The root cause of these problems, the root cause of this fitna and facade in our homes, the root cause of these problems and difficulties and this atmosphere of distrust, this toxic environment was created by this awful sin of backbiting. It was a sin that we didn't recognize. It was a cancer that was eating us up. And today, a son has left home, a daughter has run away, somebody's done this, brothers don't speak to each other, children are not speaking to their parents. And if one traces it back, a majority of the time, it has started from backbiting. Allahu Akbar. And at that point, the shaitan made us think it was nothing. It was something small. It didn't even bear worth mentioning. And yet, from an early age, we had taught our children that it's okay to come and grass up your sister or your brother. Now, there's differences there. The scholars write that one thing is if a child comes to you and complains, don't rebuke him for backbiting. Because if they simply say that Fly is doing this, my other brother and sister is doing this, then do justice between the children. Call the other one, listen to both of them, and then tell them that this is what we do. Now that isn't backbiting. But if a child comes to you afterwards and starts saying, or when you come home from work, the child comes over to you and says, uh, Abaji, during the day this happened, this person came, mum did this, brother did this, this person did this, he did this. Stop the child. Stop the child straight away. But I don't want to know. Because within what you're saying, there are some faults of others. And do you know, Betaka, that is backbiting? So we want to avoid that because that Allah and His beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa forbidden. And it brings problems and difficulties to the house and it takes away the peace and tranquility of a home and of the heart. So don't tell me about what others did. Never tell me what others did. Never point out the faults of others. If there's a problem, I'm here to help you. But I don't want to know of the faults of others. What effect would that have on the child if you did that regularly? So as soon as the child starts to mention things and you stopped them in a beautiful way, that child will grow up thinking that backbiting is really bad. And as the child grows older, the beauty and the love of Islam will spread. And that child will develop into an adult with some beautiful characteristics. Why? Because they will stay away from backbiting and they will hate backbiting. So as soon as somebody outside starts to backbite, that young person will stop them. And if he can't stop them, he'll move away because he knows what the destructions of backbiting. He will know the severe consequences of backbiting. So my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madden Channel, let's teach our children from a very early age that backbiting is haram and it is a grave sin. Don't encourage it. Indeed, in a beautiful hadith of Barakah, Aka sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam taught us how to behave with our children. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Amir radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam had come to our home. My mother said to me, Come, I will give you something. Upon hearing this, 
The noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her, what do you intend to give him? She said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I intend to give him dates upon which the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you had not intended to give him anything, it would have been written down as a lie. Allahu Akbar. So today we think that with the children, it doesn't matter. And today, especially our Islamic sisters around the house, they try to talk the child into doing something by lying to them. By saying, oh, we'll buy you this, we'll do this. If you do this, if you eat this, I will do this. And there's no intention. And if one looks at the Hadith in Mubarakah, if there's no intention, and it's just a lie, then a lie is written, which is a serious and grave crime. Then, further still, it is a common concept in most households that they say, go to sleep or else the, the bogeyman will come, the bigfoot will baba ajayga. And we try to scare our children. Now, first of all, it is a lie. Then you are scaring the child, but you are lying. And once the child realizes that, what dignity and respect do you have left? And then if you are lying to the child and then at the same time trying to teach the child or commanding the child not to lie, won't the child as he grows older start to think that my parents are hypocrites? Because they encourage me not to lie, but constantly they're lying to me. And in similar vein, if you tell your child, but I don't backbite, and yet you are sat in the room saying, oh, Flan did this, and you sat with the mother of your children or your brothers and off you go backbiting and the child will think my father or my mother are hypocrites because they're telling me not to backbite but that's exactly what they're doing so what Amir al-Sunnah Dhammud Barakatum al encourages us is this that we need to change our environment we need to change our thinking and we need to recognize what a grave and dangerous thing this backbiting is and to change our environment Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, the beautiful Madni Mahal, the Madni environment of Dawat Islami helps us. If we watch Madni channel regularly, then that will help us change. It will keep reminding us of this, the, the sins that Allah and His beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have asked us to protect ourselves from. If we travel on the Madni Kaflas of Dawat Islami, then they will help keep us in good check. They will keep reminding us of the dangers of backbiting. And by being with people who are conscious of this grave sin, we will develop that fear of Allah Azzawajal and this consciousness of protecting ourselves from it. And this is what a good environment does, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel. The more we associate with the God-fearing, the more we associate with the right people, the more we will be able to protect ourselves from things like backbiting, which destroy our deeds. The more conscious we become of it, and the better equipped to deal with it we become. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, toiling to gain the pleasure of Allah and His beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, working hard day and night to try and fulfill the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal is all good. And it stresses the shaitan. But the shaitan doesn't sit around. He is plotting against you. And what he is hoping for is that in a moment of anger, in a moment of jealousy, in a moment of arrogance, you will fall into the trap of backbiting and you will start to slander and backbite other people and it will give him the opportunity to destroy your deeds. Let's not let him do that. Let's unite and let's recognize this grave and heinous crime of backbiting. And let's try and work to make sure that we are aware and recognize what backbiting is. We're not the ones who start to say, oh, well, it's the truth, so it's okay. We know that the definition of backbiting is to say something about a person that is true and say it behind his back. And it is such a statement which if he learnt about, he would be upset. That is the truth. Let's protect ourselves and our families from it. And let's protect our deeds. And more importantly, let's protect our Iman. May Allah Azza wa Jal 
Give us the tofik to protect ourselves and our families from this grave cancer in our society. Amin. Bejahin Nabil Amin. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet says, Abide by turf, will not enter paradise. Prophet says, Abide by turf, will not enter paradise.